All right, everyone. Thank you and welcome. Uh, my name is Stephen from Engagement Factory. Um, I'm going to be doing introductions today, uh, and then we will hand over to Tinky Bart, who will give the presentation. A quick introduction about myself. Uh, my name is Stephen. I am uh, working for Engagement Factory in the Cape Town office. I have plenty of experience in digital marketing and um, worked with firms on their marketing automation to drive revenue and bring down costs. And um, yeah, I'm very involved with um, all sorts of elements at Engage Factory, including um, local business development and um, a lot of product management. So this marketing transformation series uh, was started again at the beginning of the year. Um, we had a very successful uh, earlier series of webinars um, covering topics like personalization, customer journey, and um, various aspects of modern marketing. We've now uh, brought back a new series. Uh, if you do want to see the old ones, you can see them uh, on our website. Uh, feel free to uh, click through there and see them uh, in your own time. So this is the third in our uh, recent series. We've covered customer experience, 2018, uh, sales and CX, making buying easy. And today we'll be tackling service and CX and making the first time right answer. Today's agenda, as I said, we'll have a quick introduction. We'll uh, look at the value of, of why it is so important to get that first time right. We'll look at some key takeaways, and if there are any Q&As, we'll cover those as well. So, in order to get the most out of this webinar, um, we encourage you to stay tuned for the coming 45 minutes. Uh, if you take any notes, you're of course welcome to do that. Uh, we will be having some brief polls, and if there are any questions, feel free to add that in the chat box. Uh, and of course, you're also invited to join the other webinars in the series. So, uh, sit back and get inspired. A little bit about Engagement Factory. We are now over 60 employees. We are based in Eindhoven in the Netherlands. And we also have offices in London, uh, Paris, South Africa, uh, and also in Dubai. And of course, in the modern marketing world, uh, there's a lot happening. There's a lot of competing technologies, a lot of competing strategies. And we understand this, the challenges that modern marketers are facing. It's often a struggle to integrate all these different experiences. Um, to bring together your systems, your process, your people, and your data uh, is something that busy um, firms and busy clients uh, often struggle to get, uh, get to and to achieve. And that's something that we've worked with a number of clients to, to really improve and to help them achieve their marketing goals. And of course, modern marketing is built around the right type of engagement. Modern marketers want to get the right message to the right person at the right time. Not only that, but they want to do it in the right channel. And of course, this is what results in powerful uh, engagement, getting you the sort of marketing results that really drive success. And then, of course, what we want to do is not just um, have one part of the marketing puzzle. We want to be able to help you all the way along the various steps of your marketing journey. Uh, and we have worked uh, with partners that can really help you do this and help you understand your challenges, not only in marketing, but also in the sales and service side. And these partners are obviously ourselves, Engagement Factory on the marketing side, BPI on demand for sales, and TKC Digital on the customer experience side of things. So uh, without further ado, let's turn over to Tinky from TKC. So Tinky, I'm just going to go ahead here and make you the presenter. Okay, well, thank you for having me. Um, my name is Tinky Bart. I'm the CEO of TKC Digital, and we are experts in um, delivering great experience for 
experiences to our customers. We're experts in service and um, they're proud to be part of the Sparks Alliance with Engagement Factory and BPI On Demand where we uh, take in the service space and um, we've been doing that for 10 years. We're headquartered in Holland and we have offices in Brussels and in Denmark, in Copenhagen. Um, and we serve uh, customers on a global basis. So we focus on larger organizations. And I would just like to um, walk you through an experience that I recently had myself. Um, I was meeting one of my customers in Brussels uh, late afternoon. And after that meeting, I had um, a, a dinner with my coworker from from, uh, from TKC Digital in Brussels. And after that, I uh, went to my car and I drove back home. And usually when I do that, I start singing songs because there's not a very good reach for uh, for the radio in Brussels from Holland. So um, when I drive back, I sing in my car. And at some point I had to stop for a traffic light. And all of a sudden I hear this really loud bang. And some guy broke into my car, uh, uh, smashing my window. There was glass everywhere. And I was really shocked, scared. And I looked to my right and I see this guy who took my purse um, my bag and everything in it and ran away with it including my computer my passport my driving license everything so I had nothing and in my bag was also my um, car key because I drive without a, a car a car key so it's it's, it's automatic um, so I couldn't drive away either um, at that moment um, well what would you do um, I called my husband this is something I do in such uh, situations and of course he couldn't help me right away but he advised me to call the police and to make sure that I could be um, helped and towed it away. Uh, but because my car couldn't drive, that was sort of a complex process. And my lease agency was actually not able to help me at that moment. They weren't able to give me the right information. Um, apparently, I don't have such a great contract with them, um, which probably is fine because I signed for it. But at the moment that you are in a situation like this, you really would like to be informed about what you can expect in the situation and how you can solve it and what will happen. Um, as you can see, it's dark, it's nine at night. I'm in the most dangerous area of um, Brussels. And um, well, actually I'm just standing there waiting and that actually took three hours. So um, that's quite some time. Um, and well, that sort of is a, a nice um, a bridge to what we do from TKC Digital perspective. Um, we actually help organizations to deal with their um, um, information and to be able to offer that at the right moment, at the right place to the right person. So that person knows what to do in a certain situation, regardless of the chosen channel. So um, I was there for like four hours waiting for, uh, for me to know what to do. Could I drive home? Could I uh, take a taxi? Uh, could I go to a hotel? Or did I have to arrange it by myself? Well, those were questions I had, and I was not really being kept up to date about that. So I was sort of scared and also annoyed. Um, we help organizations to answer their customers' questions first time right, and to learn from those questions continuously. Um, we believe that that is what drives customer loyalty. Be there at the moment of truth and be there to, to, to help your customers, to give them the right information, not just in the customer service process, but also in the buying process, actually at any moment in the customer journey. Um, that's our mission and uh, that's what we can help you with. Um, and so uh, uh, at first, I would like to ask you a couple of questions. I was just wondering um, what the percentage in your opinion of people is that start their service journey online? Um, so I would like to run that poll right now and see what your answers to that question would be. Um, I've based these questions on a, a global uh, research. So if you can, yeah, thank you. <laughs> Just give it a couple more moments. Yeah, sure. Okay. The actual answer to this um, to this poll question is 87 percent, and I have one uh, coming up right after. Um, and my next question would be: In what would be the um, percentage of people that go online? And actually don't get the answer to their service request. So uh, what would it be the percentage of people that would need human assistance during these kind of journeys? Oh, 
Well, from, I can see from the results that some of you are a little more um, pessimistic than um, what is the um, the result from this global uh, research. Some of them are a little more optimistic. In fact, it's 57%. Uh, mm -hmm. And that means um, that this is not always and very often actually it, it's not um, an intentional process so um, when people go online or to a digital channel they expect an answer there and um, they don't expect that in 57% um, of the times out of 87% uh, of an initial journey online um, that they would need to go for human assistance um, mm. now, my last question in this poll mm -hmm. is the following mm -hmm. And that one is that, okay, now I'm talking to the expert and the expert should be able to give me the right answer to my question. But what is the percentage of these contacts that do not receive the right answer? Um, the research uh, turned out uh, that it was 50%. So now I'm talking to the expert and still the expert doesn't have a first time right answer. So our message is um, think about these kind of journeys. Think about where your customers are, um, what kind of questions they are asking and how well you are performing and giving them the right answer in the right channel. And what can you learn from that? Um, so looking at the next slide, looking at the journey just now, we have a digital part of things and then human assisted part of things and these are actually the uh, modern channels that people can choose to contact an organization and these are the more traditional ones and one cannot go without the other um, looking at the situation i just told you about where i was um, carjacked and well didn't know what to do um, you would like to talk to a person but you would also like to be kept up to date for example through a chatbot and all this content that you would need to be able to do that um, should come from one single source so every content channel that I would um, contact should have the same answer to the same question um, but should be focusing on um, on the channel so for example in a chatbot it would be typically a little shorter so the format would change but the content would still remain um, the same it just requires a different kind of um, conversational um, support um, doing that um, you would like to learn from the kind of questions that are being asked in the digital domain and the ones that end up in the human assisted domains um, after they started online and you would like to learn from that and improve the next time um, so you would need um, not just a vision on that on how you would like to um, um, deliver the right service and the right customer experience to your customer, but you would also like to learn from that and continuously improve. Um, that's something that you would need um, a system for that you can facilitate that process for you. Um, and that also can offer the right channel and the right to the right contact once you don't get the answer in the online environment. Um, now, there are quite some, um, some achievements that can be made when you do that in the right way. Um, and one of them is, of course, typically that you will um, increase your online conversion, um, looking at the first time right answer given online. But also you can use that service content to increase your online sales by offering the right information at the right time within your buying journey without your customer um, having to leave that buying journey to get answers to questions. Um, on the other hand, of course, first time right is a really important one um, because everything you don't have to do twice is uh, less is, is, is more satisfactory to your customers and will give you uh, more a more trust feeling uh, for them and and people who trust organizations uh, would like to do more business with them and that of course is in the end the goal that we would like to achieve so more sales and a higher first contact resolution um, um, Gartner says that customers will manage 85% of their human of, of their relationships without human interaction by 2020. Um, well, looking at the journey that we've just looked at and 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 the results that were given in the poll, um, there still is some work to do to um, facilitate this um, this prediction. Um, I think 85% is maybe a little bit ambitious by Gartner, but usually if they do predictions like this, um, we will work our ways towards this and customers especially the younger generations are more and more going to digital um, channels to get their um, service requests and their questions answered so that's something um, that, that we focus on um, 
we see trends in this. So when you start um, creating your, um, your, my, your, your content, we would always advise to create small pieces of content so you can use it in specific combinations to the different channels that you would like to um, present it in. And by having these smaller items, um, it will be a, a lot easier to expand to new channels than it would be in the past. Um, another thing that we see is that data scientists are becoming more and more popular because they can actually analyze the journeys that I just um, showed to you from digital to online uh, to, um, to, the, to the human assisted and see what kind of questions are being asked and where that can be improved. And not just to improve the service content, but also to contribute to continuous improvement. So for example, improve a product or uh, uh, improve a process. Um, I have a couple of examples of that in a second. Another thing that we see is that knowledge editors um, be, get a real important um, role in an organization because they manage actually every channel where there is um, service contact and that service contact should be supported by really great uh, branded um, in the right tone of voice service content um, and many more organizations that we are working with call these people customer experience artists because they actually um, um, be are the coordinator of this entire um, um, channel and, and this entire journey that they deliver the content for so we call them artists these days. Um, that also makes them a little more sexy than a knowledge editor. Three other trends. One is um, the ease of use. Um, sounds like, like, like what we call in Holland an open door. Um, yes, of course, it should be easy to use. But um, I can give you lots of examples where actually it's not being made easy for users to get the right answers. There's many clicks. There's lots of content that they have to scroll through. Um, and it's not always helpful in their preferred channel. So um, that should be made more easy for end users because that will make them sting to your brand. Um, another thing which is also important is um, when you start thinking about um, setting up uh, knowledge management uh, to create a better customer experience, it's really important um, to do that from a best case scenario. So first you draw up what you would actually like to achieve and then reverse engineer uh, towards that solution instead of you know, uh, making current processes more, more uh, improve current processes because that's always a suboptimal situation. And last but not least, and that's a really important one, is get the basics right. Um, start small, grow bigger from there. Those are very important trends that we have discovered, not just in customer experience, but also in knowledge management. So um, we have a methodology. When we start uh, mastering knowledge management in service, um, we have three phases that we uh, actually guide our customers uh, through, and that's the design phase, the implementation phase, and the improvement phase. Um, knowing you cannot do everything all at once, it's really important to create a shared vision. Um, if you, you know, uh, have KPIs around what you would like to achieve with this, it will become much easier to uh, get buy-in and commitment from a, from, from a C level, but it will also become much easier to say yes or no to certain initiatives and you know take them to the next level. So um, for example, which channel you will use, or will you use the service content in chatbot or just online or maybe just for your front office customer service agents? Um, will you use it also in shops? And if yes, how will you do that? Who should be involved? And all those kind of questions are really important to you know get 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 everything going. Um, another thing that's really important in the design phase is figuring out which scope, and by that we mean what kind of questions will you be answering in the first phase of your implementation. Considering you can't do everything at once, what are the questions that are of most importance that you will be answering within your first implementation to make that difference? To make that difference in those moments of truth, um, like I had when I was in my car, I would have really expected that those simple questions, I'm in my car, I'm, my purse and my everything is stolen, help me, what can I do? That my lease agency would have a typical answer for that. Well, 
that's something that you can uh, can think about. What is important to your customer? What is important to you? What fits your brand and where will you start with? That is what you translate to a roadmap. And actually after that, you can start with implementing this um, this this thing. And um, an important um, message that I would like to give you is that a system by itself will not make the difference. So it's a combination of building blocks, being system, content and structure, but also roles and processes related to that shared vision that will actually help you uh, to take it uh, to take it step by step and to do the right thing so um, roles and processes uh, that means are your content experience artists um, do they have the right competences are they able to write for all these different channels um, can they control it from one single source and published to there. Um, do you have your processes uh, in place regarding um, entering new items, um, reviewing existing items, and doing a periodic check on performance? Is your uh, data scientist in place and does he know what to do related to the KPIs that you have defined? Um, and in step six, uh, the content and the structure. Is your content useful? Can people um, actually find it? And when they find it, do they can they solve their problem with it? Um, and the more easily uh, written in, in customer language you will do that, the better it will um, comply with their demands. Um, we've worked with a large consumer electronic uh, organization um, who was experienced in, uh, um, in, in coffee, making coffee machines and they had every exception about the coffee machines in their in their knowledge base but not the most important question or a, a television um, flat screen panel um, 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 uh, company who um, had every every information detailed information about their flat screens but not how to turn it on and at the beginning of flat screens the button was hard to find for people so really think about this from a customer perspective what kind of questions do they have and answer those and don't think too much in the exceptions and all the exceptions that you can think of so once you have step one two four five and six in place you can actually enter those into the system so that the system will work for you um, and that it will help you to achieve the right results from there you can publish and test and what is really important is that you um, actually make your end users and that could also be customers part of this um, process. Let them help you think along, let them help you define the scope um, and let them help you define the processes so that you can be successful in this and get the right buy-in and adaptation from, their, uh, from the users as well. And so once you have implemented that, you can start measuring, analyzing and improving from there. Um, so those are our 10-step methodology. Um, um, Knowledge management means structuring things. Um, that can be a little boring. It means discipline, but it will lead up to really nice results. So um, that, that would be a takeaway um, um, that we would have, of course. Um, so one rule of thumb regarding service content, make sure it's high quality. Um, like I just said, make sure that with that, you will answer the question your customer has. Um, so write it in customer language, um, avoid jargon and things like that. Keep it short and simple. Um, and also make sure that it is up to date. One of the reasons why many um, many customers that go online still contact the contact center is because they have a feeling that the information that is shown there is not up to date and they go and check if that is the case and they contact the contact center or make sure that you manage expectations. If you don't do that, people will need to contact you to figure out what they can expect as a next step. So those what would be typical status questions that you don't want to um, won't, don't, don't want your customer to ask you if you could have told them about it in the first place. So those are five rules of thumb that um, are important when writing high quality service content for your knowledge bases. Um, we've done that for quite a few um, organizations, um, so uh, I would like to elaborate just a little about Adidas, where we help them um, in uh, Western Europe to, um, to make sure that we have a consistent answer to questions. Their biggest challenge was that their customer service reps were taking way too much time to find the right answer to questions um, that took them took them forever. Um, there was a lot of double work and inconsistency in answers because people were making
making up answers um, while they didn't have the right information uh, at, at hand. Um, after we were uh, finished with our project, uh, we achieved, and that is something I normally focus on first, contact resolution. But here, besides contact resolution, we also um, achieved a really tremendous um, um, decrease in the, in the in the conversation time that agents had with customers. So that's a really nice bonus that we achieved there, which was very, uh, very visible in the in the contact center. Um, so the other um, um, organizations are also larger kind of organizations in insurance, uh, IT help desk travel and um, media journals, where we um, sort of did the same thing with uh, likewise results. So another fact is that there is 27 conversion potential, um, I'm saying here due to, but I should say thanks to offering service content in a buying journey. Um, we have really great examples about that. I can share them with you maybe in the next, uh, in the next conversation, um, but offering the right um, elements of content, answers to questions that are often being asked during the um, buying journey can really help you to increase your conversion and make sure that people buy something instead of having to exit the buying journey, go to um, a, help, a help channel, get their answer there and then go back. Um, the chance that I will not come back to my buying uh, buying journey is huge. And so those 27% can be a really nice um, improvement in your buying, uh, buying journey. So here are um, five more takeaways to become a leader in digital service. Um, I've already told you, I will emphasize it again. Think from a customer perspective. Um, think from the best case scenario, so reverse engineer. Um, what would you like to do for your customer uh, during those moments of truth that you have to be there for them? So reverse engineer from there. Um, one really important thing is to get marketing, sales, and service to work together um, and to let go of the siloed approach. It's not your customer's business that they have to deal with a marketing, a sales, and a service department. Get them to really you know, work together, share their content, and make the, um, the customer journey uh, from that perspective um, um, a really um, um, seamless one. Um, introduce the content experience artists. So take that really serious and make sure that you can um, achieve the results that I've just shared with you. Um, because if you don't, it won't work. So this is a real, um, a, a real role in an organization. And start small, show results and grow from there because that will make people eager to sort of hop on and, 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 and join you and um, no, benefit from this as well. Well, this was actually the picture I started with. Um, if this had been for me uh, uh, all clear, I wouldn't have been so worried about where my where the hell my car was being taken to, um, and I would have been um, um, helped a lot quicker, I think. So um, that was. Uh, our, our story um, from TKC Digital about uh, knowledge management and how that can contribute to a much better customer experience. Um, thank you for listening. Great. Thank you very much, Tinky. And um, I think we're going to do some questions, if that will work for you. Sure. Um, and so we do have a couple of questions here. First one is, uh, how consistent is one's content or should one content be and when it comes to multi-channel? Um, well, that's a matter of, like I just said, uh, discipline. I think you should have the same tone of voice and the same message in every in every in every channel, um, and that can be a challenge. But if you start small and, um, and and take it from there, it will become more manageable. And that's why we need this customer experience artist uh, who can manage that content and coordinate it uh, across all these channels. Great, thank you. And um, what do you need to do in terms of sales and marketing alignment um, in the sort of service area? Yeah, um, well, that's a really good question, of course. Um, it's important to uh, get the people uh, in the marketing department who figure out new products, who do their campaigns about it, who have messages towards the customer. If there's questions about that, it would be great if the service department knew about it and can answer them right away. Um, so you can really team up a lot better with your marketing and sales departments. 
um, than, than, than maybe you are currently uh, able to. Great, thank you. Uh, let's just give it a moment. Okay, here's another one, which is, what is the future of chatbots and artificial intelligence and what will the impact be for service employees? That's a that's also a very good one. It's very uh, very uh, of 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 these these days this age. Um, artificial intelligence grows as volume uh, volume grows, um, and and chatbots uh, with the right functionality can uh, can can use this these kind of uh, functionality to improve themselves. Uh, but there needs to be some volume in it. And I think chatbots uh, once you have your answers to questions can take over, give the answers themselves, learn from that, and improve from there um, and that will grow and that's also why Gartner is predicting this 85 percent um, customer service without human interaction so um, I think the role of chatbots in the near future will grow tremendously great thank you and if we've got time for one more and um, it says if your service department is still sort of old-fashioned uh, what's the first thing to get started with um, well, actually, I was talking to a prospect customer this morning. Um, the first thing to get started with is getting the basics right and making sure that your customer service agents all have the same um, answers to the same questions and that they can deliver a better service. And then you can grow from there. But also do it from a customer ex uh, perspective. So don't, don't start with the example I just gave you with all these exceptions that you can think about, but start with that what matters to your customer. And then you will make um, tremendous tremendous improvements in very short time. Great, thank you. Uh, let's just give it a moment to see if there are any more questions. It looks like that is it. Um, let me just switch over back to us. Great. Um, so thank you so much, Tinky, for that. Uh, just a reminder that we have uh, three more webinars coming up, uh, 22nd of May, June the 5th, and June the 19th. So um, please feel free to um, tune into those. And if you get, need to get into contact with any one of us, uh, you can see uh, the contact details here. Um, so again, thank you very much, Tinky, for your input and your presentation. Uh, thank you for joining us. Thanks for having me. And uh, be sure to join, in for, join us again for our next webinar. Thanks very much, everyone, and good afternoon. Thank you.